I wanna share with you all my current setup of the Pocket 4K with the 12G HDR Video Assist from Blackmagic Design. Now, before we get started, I need to make one thing clear. Blackmagic Design have never reached out to me, never asked me to say anything nice about their products. I'm just a legit fan of these tools. So if you've been following the channel for a minute, you know that I did a couple of big videos on this 12G HDR Video Assist back in February when I first picked this unit up. And I've enjoyed working with this monitor recorder combo so much that I just had to share the way that it's improved my progress. I'm gonna show you today how this setup can improve your professionalism, security, and reliability to your workflow as well. Now at first you may ask, Justin, why do you need a monitor recorder when the camera you own already does ProRes and RAW internally? And the simple fast answer to that is I'm not always shooting on my own camera. In 2019, I booked multiple jobs where I was shooting on cameras that either the producers rented or they owned already. Now, the really cool part about that is you get to shoot on some really awesome, expensive cameras with really good dynamic range, but the downside is you may never see any of that footage ever again. Now, that is a huge problem. I never liked driving home after those particular jobs and wondering when or if I'd ever see that footage. It didn't leave a very good feeling in the pit of my stomach. But with the 12G HDR Video Assist, that is no longer a problem. And as it turns out, most directors actually enjoy the idea of having those backup files. That was the original idea for wanting to return to a monitor recorder setup. But now let me tell you why I chose this over something like returning to an Atomos. If you've been on the channel for a minute, you know that I've had my bout with three different Atomos monitors in the past. They're an okay brand, but there's certain things about them that I'm just not a fan of. Particularly, it's their color science and their build quality. I'm just not a fan of plastic monitors. So some of the major advantages with the 12G HDR video assist is that it's made of aircraft grade aluminum. It is a 2500 nit high dynamic range monitor that automatically detects the HDR signal. It has broadcast level scopes. And if you're using it with a black magic camera, the false color is identical, which is always nice. 12G SDI in and out a digital slate that you can add metadata to. And my favorite part is you can record up to 4K, 60 frames per second, ProRes files, or depending on what camera you have, Blackmagic RAW files to these little tiny SD cards. But more on that in a minute. So people ask me all the time, what is so great about SDI? Well, first of all, it's the security. As I'm sure you're all aware, an HDMI cable doesn't take much to get yanked out. And the cables themselves don't exactly last forever. Whereas SDI takes a thick coax cable with a BNC locking mount. Now, most of the Atomos monitors are only 3G SDI, which means lower resolution at lower frame rates. Whereas a 12G SDI signal can send an HDR 4K signal up to 60 frames per second. You're just not gonna be able to do that with your normal 3G SDI connection. However, you do need to make sure that the coax cable you purchase is actually 12G SDI compatible. It took me three tries to finally find a good one, and I'm gonna have links to this one down in the description below. The cool thing is about this, as you'll see in the eBay link, it's from a company over in the UK, and you can have it at any length you desire. Not to mention some cameras, like almost all of Aries cameras, only have SDI out. HDMI isn't even an option. So there's always that idea of professionalism and future-proofing to think about as well. Now back to the media cards. You do have the option of recording to an external SSD drive via the USB-C port. And if you guys saw my initial tutorial of this monitor, you already saw that in action. But that's just a tad overkill for my more recent scenarios, especially when I realized I can record up to 4K 60 frames per second ProRes on these little tiny Freetail Evoke Pro SD cards. Now these little cards are V60 rated cards, so that means they can handle those higher resolutions at the higher frame rates. And this brand is actually on the Blackmagic Design approved list, and they're currently going for $40 over there on Amazon Prime. Now here comes my most favorite part about this HDR video assist. It's the trigger record function with timecode. So when I'm shooting on the Pocket 4K and I hit the record button on my camera, the HDR video assist automatically starts recording to its internal SD card. So what you have now is a really high resolution proxy. And I'm using the term proxy kind of loosely here because it is actually a ProRes HQ file. But now if you know anything about the Pocket 4K, you know that it can only output a 1080p signal 
through its HDMI. So depending on whatever codec you're shooting in, for instance, if you were doing 4K DCI, well, in that case, then yeah, you would be shooting a proxy file, but only because of the limitations of the camera. However, it would be a ProRes HQ 1080p proxy. But what I like about this workflow is that it's very akin to what it would be like if you were shooting on an Alexa, because Alexas record proxies to internal SD cards as well. But for all of my non-Pocket 4K shooters, your camera could very well allow you to simultaneously record those ProRes 4K files and maybe even Blackmagic RAW files. You just have to check the specs of your camera's output and the video assist compatibility list. So here's three main reasons why this dual recording setup is so awesome. Number one, I can easily pop this monitor off of my rig and just take it to lunch with me. And the directors actually like that. They can review how the day is going and get a quick refresher on the shots we've already done. Number two, I'm a bit of a nerd and I like to review the footage as soon as I get home. And since I have these high-res ProRes files on this little tiny SD card, I can just pop it into my MacBook Pro, airplay that to my television, and now I can easily scrub through all of the footage from the day from the comfort of my couch while watching it up on the big screen. If any of you guys have had your own experience with that Blackmagic RAW player, you already know how finicky that program is. So being able to scrub through all of these high-res ProRes files on QuickTime is a dream. The third advantage to dual recording with this HDR video assist is if anything ever goes wrong with the media inside of your camera, you can always rest assured that you have those backup files on the HDR video assist. However, those files from the Pocket 4K are going to be 1080p versus 4K because of the whole HDMI limitations of that camera. But hey, at least they will be ProRes and depending on whatever codec you put it on, they could very well be ProRes HQ. And those ProRes files would certainly be better than nothing but a sob story to hand over to your client at the end of the day. So that is a pretty huge bonus. And this setup is so nice and tiny, it's not nearly as bulky as some of those Atomos monitors that I've owned in the past. Quick little side note on recording media for the Pocket 4K, I have since retired from recording externally to SSD. Now do keep in mind, I shoot every day, so this may not apply to all of you, but some of you may remember a few months back during a transfer upload where I had files mysteriously disappear off of my Samsung one terabyte SSD. But since then, my little blue Samsung SSD has had the internal USB-C port come completely loose, and now no USB-C cable will stay connected to it any longer. Now, I do realize that's probably something that happened because I'm using it every single day, but still, I just cannot have that happening for obvious reasons. So I've graduated onto CFast cards, one quick note about the CFast. So Lexar sold their name back in 2017 to a Chinese company. And not long after that, Aerie put out a public statement saying they can no longer recommend Lexar CFast cards for their cameras due to complications after 2018. So if you go hunting for CFast cards and you find the killer deal on Lexars like I did, just look on the back and make sure that the copyright is prior to 2017. And you can also look for Micron Consumer Group, which were the original owners of Lexar. Or you just have to spend more money and get the Angelbirds or the SanDisk Extreme Pros. For now, I haven't been having any issues, even in Blackmagic RAW 3 to 1 4K DCI at 60 frames per second but if anything starts going south, you guys know me, I will definitely let you know. But I gotta say, I'm really loving having one less cable hanging off of the side of my camera. Now you can't have all good with no bad, and certainly there are some compromises to be had with this 12G HDR video assist. Some are easier workarounds than others. The first one is the battery issue. Now it does take two Sony MPF L-series batteries and they are hot swappable, but the downside is you're gonna be swapping those batteries out all the time. Not to mention they add a lot of weight to your rig. And if you have any experience with that, you already know how annoying it is to constantly have to readjust your monitor because of the weight of the batteries. But for me, that was no problem at all. A few months back, I found this really awesome Sony MPF dummy battery to D-tap from PowRig, and it has this really awesome OLED readout of the voltage, which leads me to a question I get all the time. There seems to be a problem across the internet with people shorting out their monitors and their cameras when they have both their monitor and camera connected to the same battery source. I don't know what to tell you guys, that has not been my experience at all. The only thing I can think of is that this is happening to people that are either buying really cheap cables or you're not using V-mount batteries. You're using some other battery source and it's just simply being overloaded. Because I do know this was a huge issue with the original Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. But here's the deal guys, this dummy battery that I use from PowRig is a $60 cable. But I realize that is steep for some of you, but you have to think, 
Would you rather spend 60 bucks or take the gamble on your monitor or camera or both shorting out on you? To me, it's a no brainer. And I've always shared with you guys the cables and batteries I use. And I do my best to be honest about things that I've been hyped about and all of a sudden they go south. I stay pretty transparent here. And I can tell you that I've been using this Waipu to D-tap from Alvin's cables for the Pocket 4K for well over a year now. And I've been shooting with V-mount batteries for at least a year as well. And I've always used dummy batteries to D-tap cables with all of my monitors, usually always Alvin's cables. And I shoot almost every single day. And for those of you that follow the channel, you know I test out a ton of different monitors and I've never experienced anything shorting out or blowing up. So I'm either really lucky or it's because I don't skimp on the cables and and I use name brand V mounts. So I'm gonna leave that up to you guys. As always, there's links to everything we talk about down in the description below. There's even a link down there to my entire kit bag. So feel free to peruse in there for all of my cables and accessories that I use. Another issue that some users have been reporting with the HDR Video Assist is overheating. Now, personally, I have yet to experience anything crazy. There was one time when I first got the monitor and I even showed it in the initial tutorial where I was shooting out in direct sunlight and I did get the warning that the monitor was getting too hot, but it didn't cause the unit to shut down entirely. But since then, there have been about four firmware updates. I have noticed, however, that the unit does seem to get more hot when using the onboard batteries, whereas when I'm running to D-tap, it doesn't get nearly as hot. But most importantly, I think you would definitely wanna keep checking in on the Blackmagic Design Support website and just make sure you're downloading all of those recent firmware updates. Now, the main downside to me about the 12G HDR Video Assist is that there is no real way to calibrate this thing. And Blackmagic Design seemed to think that because it's HDR and DCI P3 that it doesn't really need color calibrating. And I just find that bizarre. I don't like it that I can't go in there and manually adjust the white balance of the monitor, I can't change the hue, and I can't change the tint either. But, and this is a big but, you do however have the ability to adjust both the saturation and the contrast. So what I did is I imported the color bars off of the GH5 onto the HDR Video Assist and was able to do a poor man's color calibration by adjusting that saturation and contrast in conjunction with the brightness. And so here's what I found. These are the numbers that I've dialed in, so feel free to try them out and let me know what you think. I've been shooting with these adjustments for a few months now and I kinda dig it. So the contrast I have set to 74%, the saturation at 63%, and I've also found that the monitor looks the best when it's at 1000 nits. Now, obviously, depending on your particular shooting situation, you will be adjusting that brightness quite often. It's just that I found that 1000 nits seems to be the sweet spot. So there you have it, folks, my workflow with the Pocket 4K and 12G HDR Video Assist combo. I mean, you guys know that I've had other monitors sent to me since I've owned this HDR Video Assist, and we're going on six months now, and I still have it and use it daily. So if you guys know me, you know that it must be pretty damn good. However, I do know that it's gonna be quite a while until I go back to a real monitor that doesn't have a record function because recording to these little tiny SD cards is pretty badass. Hey, if you're a fan of the channel and like to the support, there's a couple different ways you can do that. The first and easiest way is to just hit that subscribe button and be sure to hit the bell so you get the latest videos as soon as they're dropped. But if you wanna go above and beyond that and be a part of a daily filmmaking conversation, then I invite you to join the Dog Times community over on Patreon. That is where once a week I release an exclusive members only video, breaking down projects, talking gear, and sharing real world experiences as a DIY indie filmmaker in Los Angeles. But my favorite part about the Patreon is the conversations happening over on Discord. That is where you will be connected with like-minded filmmakers and have instant access to learning ways to improve your own skills so you feel more confident about working on set as a professional. So welcome to the Dog Times community and I'll chat with you soon. <laughs>